morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is for you, wherever you are right now. And welcome to another session of Bizarre Financing, how to start, buy, or expand any business with little or none of your own cash. I'm Gordon Bizarre, and today I'm going to take you into a strategy that is going to knock your socks off. It's one you already know, but you've not yet learned how to use it in the direction that I'm going to share with you today. And when you do, it's going to make you a super business builder because this strategy and this way it's structured is just absolutely phenomenal. And I think you're going to see that as we go through it. So let's just dive right in. First of all, if you have any questions as we go along, uh, please type your questions into the question box on the right side panel. That way you won't forget it. It'll be there when I go to Q&A at the end. I'll just be able to go right to it. Also, if for any reason we don't get to answer your question today for any reason, please feel free to email me your question at gobiz at bizarrefinancing.com. I'm going to start out today with a history lesson. So many times people think, well, I want the latest new strategy. I want to know the latest new thing and the hottest this and the hottest that. Sometimes the hottest and best stuff was done 100 years ago and sometimes even longer. There have been some incredibly bright people who have passed this way before us and we can learn from them. And sometimes the best lessons we're ever gonna learn are from some of the greats, the greats of the past. And so we're gonna go into a little bit of a history lesson right now. I'm gonna introduce you to a fellow whose name you probably already know. Most people know him as John D. Rockefeller. He was born uh, July 8th in 1839, died May 23rd, 1937. And many people know him as the founder of Standard Oil and if you measure his net worth at his peak in 2018 dollars, it would be $409 billion today. That makes Bill Gates and our good buddy at Amazon pikers, pikers by these standards. When John D. Rockefeller built his fortune, he controlled 1.5 to 2% of the U.S. economy. In other words, 165th to 150th of its GDP. He is the all-time grand master of building phenomenal enterprise businesses. And so the question that I would like to ask you here is, do you think we could learn some important business principles from John D. Rockefeller? Well, I want to tell you categorically we can. And the interesting thing is some of his best stuff has been forgotten. And we're going to resurrect some of it here today. The thing that John D. Rockefeller taught entrepreneurs is control is more important than ownership because with control, you can explode your ownership. And control is the key to building and developing enterprise businesses. And I want you to burn that into your head. Control, it's more important than ownership. And the reason that's important is you talk to most entrepreneurs, they'll tell you what they own. They'll tell you they want to keep 100%. They'll tell you they want to expand their ownership. And I'm trying to reorient you today to one of the greatest empire builders of all time. And control is more important than ownership. So burn that into your brain. And what John D. Rockefeller did is he learned how to maintain this phenomenal control of a tremendous enterprise because he learned to leverage entities by serializing, serializing successive 51% ownerships. And I'm going to show you what he did. I'm going to flip that that heading that came out of the center of the screen up to the right-hand side because I want you to keep this in your mind. Leveraged entities by serializing successive 51% ownerships. So here's what he did. He founded Standard Oil. And he made sure that his ownership never went below 51% of Standard Oil. So that was his key in his mind. As long as I own 51%, I own control. Okay? So it meant that he could give away 49% of the company to other people who could bring value to the company. But as long as he made 51%, then he was leveraging his ownership not only to what he had, but to what he could get brought into his company by giving away 49% of it. Okay, so it's an important concept. So when it came time to take more control of more stuff, he would form another entity and he would give away 49% of that, but 51% of it was always owned by Standard Oil. 
So his 51% of Standard Oil controlled Standard Oil, but it also controlled 51% of the next company that he formed and gave away 49% of that to all the folks who could bring resources and money and assets into the company. And that's what he would do. So as soon as he gave away up to 49%, he'd form another company that he owned 100% of and then gave away more and more and more of it until he only owned 51%. But you see, he still owned control. He owned control of Standard Oil and the next company and the next company. And he kept doing this time after time, never giving away more than 49% of any company, having companies own companies own companies, where his 51% always maintained control of his entire empire. So all this time, he's building up all these companies underneath Standard Oil, and he owns control of them, giving away all the values to other people, but never giving away that 51%. Okay, so hopefully you got this. They see this is a structuring of a business to leverage out his ability to control and leveraged entities by serializing that success of 51% ownership. In other words, that was his structure right there. This was so successful, it was made illegal. He took over such a big portion of the country's commerce at that time with the key fundamental industry of energy that everybody was afraid of him because he was monopolizing the entire fuel industry. And the only way they could see to stop him was to make this practice that he was using to gain control, this practice of entity serialization of his 51%, that they made it illegal. Congress actually passed the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890 to make this that you're seeing in front of you illegal. And then it finally got to the Supreme Court in a case against him, and Standard Oil lost. It was called Standard Oil Company versus the United States. It was 1911, and they broke up the Standard Oil Company into 34 separate competing companies so that they broke up this 51% of 51% structure that he had put together. And the irony is 88 years later, a lot of these got recombined as Exxon Mobil in 1999. Now, what do you think happened 88 years later? Nobody was around that was afraid of him anymore, right? And so it got forgotten what the legislation was, and reading pieces of legislation got enacted that watered down the things that made his original system illegal. And by 1999, there was no resistance to monopolies in this anymore because the world of competition was so broad. And that enabled ExxonMobil to basically put a lot of this back together in 1999. The reason I'm sharing this with you is Rockefeller's strategy can be safely used today. The fact that it was made illegal by the Sherman Antitrust Act is long since forgotten. And the real key to it is you just don't completely dominate the market of a major economic sector. As long as you don't do that with it, you're safe. Okay, so you can't carry this out to the extreme because the Congress of the United States will come get you. Okay, the Department of Commerce will come get you by trying to reapply some of those what are now ancient antitrust laws. But as long as you don't go there to that level, you are totally safe using the structure to build out your companies. Now, whenever I cover anything, I like to know people have a takeaway. In other words, that the information that you just got here, that you have a takeaway, that you're going to take away some value to what you just heard here. And the value that you should be taking away is up to 49% of a company can be given away to make the 51% worth more. And if you're a John D. Rockefeller, you would do that in a heartbeat because every time you're doing that, you're adding value to what you're doing, but you're never giving up control, never giving up control. All right. So hopefully this is your takeaway. And if it is, you're going to find some valuable lessons here in that giving away up to 49% of your company to make the 51% worth more is smart business. It's smart to do that. Understanding this principle unlocks the door to the unlimited expansion of your business, unlimited expansion of your business. And I'm going to go through with you some examples and some additional information that's going to show you how to make that work for you. The first thing I want to do 
is now that you understand that principle, that major, major strategy and major, major principle, I want to do a quick review with you of something you've learned here at Bizarre Financing. It's one of our methods of uh, you gaining ownership in a business, and it's called 